Jim Reeves and Dean Manuel perished in the crash of the small plane Jim was piloting, which went down during a thunderstorm on the outskirts of Nashville at 4.52 p.m. on Friday, July 31st. A light plane believed to be carrying singer Jim Reeves and piano player Dean Manuel was reported to have crashed near Nashville, Tennessee last night. More than 300 men are searching woods outside the city for wreckage. Unfounded speculation and misinformation have circulated about the causes of the crash for years. But in his book, Jim Reeves, His Untold Story, Larry Jordan sets the record straight. He has unearthed important new details, including witnesses who were never interviewed by authorities and information gleaned from the long lost accident report. Larry provides a gripping minute by minute account of the events leading up to the mishap, plus the intrigue that surrounded the crash investigation including troubling aspects that remain a mystery to this day. It was so tragic what happened to Jim and Dean, and it didn't have to happen. As I explain in my book, Jim actually got his pilot's license before he was ready. He had been on the road that spring of 1963. He'd been overseas making the movie in South Africa, and then he went to Ireland for a grueling tour. And he didn't have any chance during this period to practice his flying. And yet he comes home and immediately gets his pilot's license on June 30th. And he did it by paying a guy in Nashville by the name of Lee Merriweather to give him the flying test. Lee was a flight instructor. This was instead of going the usual route of having one of the FAA examiners give Jim the test. Why did he do that? Well, Jim's charter pilots, Glenn Kemp and Bill Larson, they're appalled by this, and Bill says that Lee Merriweather was known to be unduly impressed by celebrities. It is indisputable that Jim was not competent to fly at that point. Both Glenn and Bill subsequently flew with Jim, and even months later, he was making big mistakes, such as one time when he stalled the aircraft, and uh, Glenn had to take controls away from them when they were both uh, flying Ray Price's plane. Furthermore, Jim had no business being in a more advanced aircraft like the Beechcraft Debonair as compared with the slower Cessna he normally flew. And he didn't even have the requisite number of hours, 200, to even fly it. But Fred Bunyan, a salesman for Southeastern Beechcraft, is the one who approached Jim about buying the, the Beech and uh, although Jim told his wife Mary that he had no intention of buying a plane, at the very least he flew it when he lacked all the requisite skills. So this was an accident waiting to happen. I go into the minute-by-minute -minute series of events that led up to the fatal crash based on information I was able to glean from the long-lost accident report and also numerous interviews that I did with people at the airport and so forth. And I talk about the three mistakes that Jim made that sealed his fate. Basically, he miscalculated the ability of a small but intense storm cell to intersect his flight path. The controller had offered to vector him around it and told him that a right turn would keep him clear of the rain. But Jim said he saw the rain area and thought that his present heading would take him to the right of it, so he did not change course. If the weather had remained as he saw it, he would have been all right. But as he flew northeasterly toward Franklin Road, uh, he flew underneath the rain cell and it opened up on him and he lost his forward visibility. He radioed the control tower and they advised him that he should be out of the rain in about a minute. 30 seconds later, the controller radioed back to ask Jim if he was clear of the rain area and Jim started to say negative but only got out part of the word. He said, nega. And that was all that was heard on the tower tape. What had happened in the meantime is that instead of turning right to avoid the rain, Jim had relied on his instincts more than his training, and he turned left, apparently to try to reestablish visual reference to Franklin Road that he'd just flown over. But this had the net effect of taking him further into the intense rain. He apparently got a lightning flash, yanked the yoke too hard. He was afraid of lightning anyway because his brother had been killed by it. The left wing went up, the right wing went down, and the uh, appropriate course of action would be to uh, level the wings, but he did not do this. He applied full power without leveling the wings, and it steepened the turn, 
and he had no time to recover before he hit the ground. It was all over in a matter of seconds. 